I don't know about you, but I keep getting sick and tired of this Solomon Islands Prime Minister Sogavare. He keeps putting his hand out asking for money from Australia. Now he's gone and claimed that Australia has been, quote, unneighbourly for raising concerns about the new policing deal that they've done with Beijing. They brokered it with the Pacific Island nation. That's 1,500k off the coast of Queensland. I mean, he forgets who went uh, over there, Australian uh, soldiers and police, went to the Solomons to clean up a mess, a civil unrest. They accused Australia also, this bloke has, of foreign interference and asserted that Chinese support will fill the budget gap caused by Australia delaying financial assistance. Joining me now to discuss this is Senior Analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, Malcolm Davis. Malcolm, nice to speak to you again. Have we not uh, stumped up the money? What's he, what's he complaining about now? Well, look, uh, we have given him the money, but I think that uh, he's playing uh, uh, us off against the Chinese. He went to Beijing, had a meeting with Xi Jinping, was fated uh, like a, a, a essentially a, a huge world leader. And he's, as a result, signed a series of deals with China that will make it more easy for China to establish a, 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 certainly a police presence, if not a military presence, in the Solomon Islands. As you say, 1,500 kilometres off our eastern seaboard. Correct my memory, though, Malcolm. I mean, wasn't it Australia who sent uh, boots on the ground to sort out the issue they had when they had that unrest in the markets in the capital where uh, locals and, and the Chinese population were going at each other? We certainly did provide some sort of assistance to uh, try and quiet things down. But I think the key point here is that Sogavari wants to hold on to power. Uh, there's elections coming up. He's not a popular leader. And so what he's counting on is that Chinese police presence to suppress and oppress uh, the Solomon Islands people so that he can hang on to power irrespective of the result of that election. And, of course, that means he's deeply indebted to the Chinese government, so he'll do anything they say, including allowing them to open up that military base that was, that was basically alluded to in that security deal uh, that was signed in 2022. What possibility, what real possibility would there be that the Chinese would be allowed to establish uh, some sort of military base on an island 1,500 kilometres off the Queensland coast? Look, it would start with a, a policing presence, which has already been suggested will happen. Uh, and it would start, you know, that's already talked about in terms of Chinese police training Solomon Islands police. The other interesting thing is that Sogavari said that he wants to set up a Solomon Islands military. Chinese are there to help him do that with, uh, you know, the PLA forces to train the Solomon Islands military. And before you know it, those trainers become a permanent presence in the Solomon Islands in the form of a base for PLA ground forces, maybe a port where PLA Navy destroyers can, can anchor and some sort of air base uh, on Honiara uh, for PLA Air Force uh, aircraft to fly from. So it's a gradual slippery slope from a police presence and police training to a full-scale military base. So should we briefly be worried? I think we should. Uh, if you have uh, a, a Chinese uh, police uh, presence leading to a military presence, then you've got PLA forces operating just yeah. off the coast of Australia. That's a huge concern for us. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone wants that. Malcolm Davis, thank you very much for your time.